As we begin each week, uh, we will start with the Berks County COVID-19 data report. It's presented by Brian Gottschall, Director of the Berks County Department of Emergency Services and our lead on the Berks County COVID-19 leadership team. Welcome, Brian. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you. I'll give a moment for IT to get the slide up. All right. Um, yes, as you said, our, our report for this week, March the 18th. As always, a, a look at our early warning dashboard from the state. This is last Friday's publication, the most recent publication of this data. Uh, we see, again, good downward trending indicators, not quite in the downward slope that we had been seeing in weeks prior, which uh, continues to cause us some concern. We, I mean, we, we would like to see that downward slope continue in a steep way and get all the way down to zero for, for the most of these indicators. We are starting to to see that slope flatten out. Uh, we hope that that's just a temporary blip in the data and that we'll see that start to steepen up again. Uh, we can kind of see that a little bit more over here as we look at the uh, cases and testing data. We, we see that we are down from a, a low uh, that was probably in about the end of February, beginning of March as far as our smooth case counts. And we have seen an upward trend in this over the last 14 day period. So we, we hope that uh, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I think that Dr. Keller from the local clinic observed that perhaps the reason we saw such a sharp decline was due to the fact that we had severe weather and people weren't getting out and mingling so much. And that once the weather got nice again, uh, perhaps folks would begin moving around and we would see our cases start to come up. It appears as though she may have been somewhat prescient in, in determining that. And we hope that folks, uh, as the weather does get nicer and they start to move around more, will be attentive to the mitigation measures that we've talked about for the last year and make sure that they're using those to the extent practical so that we can keep this very flat and or possibly even hopefully get to a downward trend again. Our positivity kind of reflects our case count and that we're we're not going up sharply, but we are going up from where our low was and, and in a somewhat shallow way. Uh, you know, these generally go hand in hand with perhaps the uh, positivity w uh, as a leading indicator to the case count problem. On the very good news front, our, our death slope continues to remain flat. We do have uh, deaths here and there e e almost every day, some days skipped in between. And obviously each one of those is an individual tragedy for the person, their friends and family. Um, and we don't want to forget that as we talk about these in a very analytical way. But the good news is that for our community as a whole, we're seeing this curve flatten out very much and get back to the daily counts that we were seeing throughout the uh, middle into late summer. Our hospitals continue to be in a good place. A couple weeks ago, we did have a kind of one week upward blip that appeared to be an anomaly, but we are in general seeing the uh, cases at our local hospitals trending down uh, and the hospitals are managing those cases well. Our, month, our weekly snapshot that we look at where we compare Berks to other counties, we did see a, a small upward adjustment in our number of cases per capita, I'm sorry, in our number of tests per capita. And that's really great news because if, if we see the cases per capita going down, along with the test per capita going down, that kind of might make us a little bit concerned that where there's a lot of people out there that are asymptomatic and aren't getting tested and we're missing them. But when we see our test count go up in comparison to other counties, while at the same time, our cases are moving in the other direction with other counties, that's kind of good news for us overall. So again, we wanna see case count, I'm sorry, <laughs> keep saying it the wrong way. We wanna see test counts increasing while case counts are decreasing that's really the direction that we're looking for in order to make sure that a downward trend in cases is, is really reflecting what's going on in the community. And again, onward continuing good news that our death count per capita is continuing to trend downward. Uh, getting on to the topic that everybody's most interested in these days, vaccines. Um, this week, we are 12th in the Commonwealth in the number of first dose administrations and 14th in the number of fully vaccinated or second dose administrations. A week ago, we were 12th and 13th. 
Uh, so a small downward tick in the number of fully vaccinated, but uh, that's not unexpected because a number of weeks ago as we were going through the decreased allocation of vaccine from the state due to them trying to clean up the, the second dose problem, we saw our first doses go down dramatically. So it makes sense that three to four weeks later, we would be lagging in the second doses that are administered behind those first doses. Um, the good news is, and I guess we really have to stop talking about this in the term of first dose and second dose, because now that Johnson & Johnson is getting out there in our community, primarily among healthcare and school folks these days, we, we, we can't think about fully administered equaling second doses anymore because fully <laughs> covered may mean people that had only a single dose of Johnson & Johnson. So I guess I have to re recalibrate my, my verbiage and start talking about this a little bit differently in future weeks. Uh, instead of first and second doses. Uh, this is a slide that we showed for the first time last week because I thought it gave a pretty good representation of where Berks County is with respect to other counties in the Commonwealth. I'll, I'll kind of recap it again for folks that missed last week. Again, we're looking for dark colors. We would very much like if Berks County were the darkest color on the map in both categories. But the gray one is folks that have partial administrations or just a first dose of Moderna or Pfizer. And the pink map is full administrations or people that have had the second dose of those or the first dose of Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the darker, the better. That means more people per capita. And because these graphics are scaled on a per capita basis, it, it kind of controls for the largeness or smallness of a county and makes everybody able to be compared equally. Uh, there really has not been significant change anywhere throughout the Commonwealth from week to week, so the map looks very much like it did previously. We always show the opportunities in Berks County. There are still the same approximately 34 locations within Berks possible. I'm probably going to modify this slide moving forward uh, because we know that a number of those providers have not gotten vaccine in weeks. And in fact, I'm going to share some information at the end here that we learned from DOH last night uh, that tells us that many of these providers are not going to get vaccine uh, moving forward. So we'll come back to that. But in, in the last week, there were about 11,700 doses received in Berks County. Not nearly enough, but on the good news front, better than we've seen uh, in any other week to date. Uh, those 11,700 doses were among 18 total providers at two very opposite ends of the spectrum, and, and I'll talk about that in a moment. This is our eye chart that we show every week. Uh, you know, every time a new provider gets added in the county, the text has to get a little smaller to show it on one screen, and I apologize for that. But these are all of the providers in the county who have gotten vaccine since day one, the total number of doses they've received uh, in Pfizer or Moderna, and then summed up. This takes that same information and resorts it weekly, showing how much vaccine we've gotten week over week. And the data that we talked about in the GIS slide there about the uh, number of doses received, the number of providers would be for week 13, the, the one level up from the bottom of the chart that's on the screen. And that reflects what is the last full week of data. We do have partial data for week 14, and this is some good news that I wanna illustrate. So in week 13, which was our largest allocation to date, we received almost 11,700 doses. In week 14, we're already at 11,850 doses, and that has not included any data from the state about the Commercial Pharmacy Partnership Program, which is the small pharmacies and the chain pharmacies, not necessarily small, that receive reasonably small allocations week over week. It also does not include any allocation for the CVS pharmacies who are receiving Pfizer vaccine under the Pfizer Pharmacy Partnership Program. So we would hope that once the data is finalized, we would actually see that 11,850 number uh, grow by anywhere from 2,000 to 2,600 doses based on the trends that we've seen week over week. And that, of course, would put us significantly above any prior allocation if those pharmacy allocations do come through this week. Uh, again, we've been showing the, uh, the information about allocation to counties. Uh, just to reiterate what this slide demonstrates, the counties in blue are the counties that have county level health departments. Again, attempting to demonstrate that this is a problem across the board in the populated counties throughout the Commonwealth, not just counties that don't have a health department. 
Um, we see that Burks cumulatively ranked across all 14 weeks is 52nd uh, in the state as far as doses allocated to the county per capita. Uh, in line with York, Lancaster, Westmoreland, uh, and even to some extent Montgomery, Bucks, and Chester. Uh, this is a issue of concern for all of the most populated counties in the state who have been making a case to DOH that the allocations that have been coming to us have not been adequate given the size of the county's population. And we've further drawn this out in an effort to demonstrate to DOH where this problem has come from. This chart is a new chart that we haven't shown previously in this meeting, but what this does is it breaks down and instead of looking at it, it looks at it cumulatively all the way in the right hand column, but it also looks at each week of allocation for where counties have been in the ranking per capita. And if we focus in on Burks, which is about the sixth or seventh row down here, we can see that we've vacillated from the 40s. Our best position prior to this week was 26 during week two. But in general, we've been in the 40s or even 50s uh, in ranking per capita until this most current week. With the allocation that was done in week 14, uh, if we only look at week 14 as a snapshot, we see that we are 16th in the state as as far as doses per capita. The good news about this is that the state has indicated to us that the allocation that was done in week 14 is going to reflect how the allocations are going to be done moving forward throughout the Commonwealth. And while it's great news that we would end up then around 16th per capita, as opposed to 56th or 45th or wherever we were, it still isn't good enough. And, and I know that uh, I, I, I'm saying this more for the benefit of the public than the commissioners because it is the commissioners themselves who have committed to continuous engagement with DOH to ensure that we're seeing more allocation coming into Berks County. And our legislative delegation is also on board with this and lobbying to DOH to try to correct these problems that existed in prior weeks. Um, I, I believe that through ongoing collaboration with DOH, we're going to be able to change that number even more and get Burks in line with where they really ought to be, which is more, you know, around eighth or so uh, in, in ranking in the Commonwealth. And we, we also see that our partners in neighboring in the neighboring larger counties are also making improvements. Uh, not nearly to the extent that Burks has in going from 53rd to 16, but we see Montgomery going from 42nd to 29th and Delaware going from 38th to 15th. That's a pretty significant jump there even given their population. So uh, all of the more populated counties are really doing hard work to try to lobby with the state to fix these problems that have come out over the last number of weeks and ensure that the vaccine that's coming into our area is, is appropriate given the population of our area. So that takes us to the dialogue that we've been having with the Department of Health and some information that we'd like to share with the public. We, we have found that DOH has decided that they're going to focus vaccine allocation on eight key providers. And those providers are listed here on the screen. Um, the DOH believes that by focusing on these eight key providers who have demonstrated a capability to move vaccine out the door, they're going to be able to better serve the population in Berks County. And I believe that it's fair to say that we in Berks County government generally agree with the assertion of, of focusing on these folks. The other thing that this does for us as a county now is it gives us a captive audience. We, you know, with 34 providers who might get anywhere from 100 doses to 1,500 doses in any given week, we really were scrambling to try to figure out where to focus our attention and our effort to, to help logistically where we could to, to have these providers be successful. Now that the state has culled this list down to eight and said that this aid is going to be consistent, we can very much more focus focus our attention on these eight and how we can help them. The state has also said that there's a, going to be approximately 12,000 doses a week coming into Berks County moving forward. Again, this gives us not, not a great, we want that number to be bigger, but whatever the number is going to be, at least it helps us to understand how much we're going to get week over week and be able to plan with these providers what the best way is to get that out to the public. 
The one caveat that I'd make clear for the public is that the status of the Retail Pharmacy Partnership Program remains unclear. And this is the Rite Aids, the Weisses, the Giants, um, what, what they categorize as the top co-pharmacies. We are still unclear whether, in addition to these eight, the state is going to allocate vaccine to those pharmacies, and if so, in what volume. So I think we'll get a little bit more clarity about that as the weeks move on and understand whether those partners also will be at the table trying to fill in the gaps. Um, you know, we, we recognize geographically that some of the farther out areas of the county, particularly the far north, the far west, and the far south, are not represented in these num in these eight key providers. So people may have to travel a little bit to get to one of these larger providers. And we hope that some of that gap will be filled in by the state continuing to provide vaccine to those smaller pharmacy operations that do have geographical representation in the farther out areas of the county. So I'll pause there, Commissioner. That's our report for this week. Uh, I, I know we're going to defer to Commissioner Barnhart to talk about the Co-County Wellness Report and also the county's uh, efforts with respect to our partnership with BCHC, but, but perhaps there may be some questions with respect to the report before we move on. So I, I just want to acknowledge that uh, late yesterday, uh, Brian uh, led a discussion, a uh, virtual discussion, with uh, the governor's office and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Uh, that is where we got the information on these eight targeted entities for Berks County and uh, quite a bit of additional uh, information. We talked to them about uh, the uh, mass vaccination clinic uh, that the county is uh, standing up and how that will function. You'll hear more about that in a minute. Uh, Senator Schwank was on that call with us uh, and is working to advocate as well. Uh, we are hopeful that uh, the improvement we're seeing this week continues going forward. Uh, I can tell you <laughs> our colleagues here in southeastern Pennsylvania, a number of them continue to be very, very concerned and, and frankly, we're happy to be at 16th uh, for at least at this point this week. Uh, I would really be very unhappy if I was Montgomery and Chester County uh, because they are actually significantly worse now than uh, we are and they're significantly larger counties than we are, which I will also state, which we've stated many times, which have a county department of health uh, so that's not making a difference in this uh, challenge. But thank you for the detailed update and we'll be hopeful that we see Berks County continue to improve uh, its availability when it comes to vaccine.